Um, this morning we're going to be reading out of part of uh, the ninth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Uh, I feel a little, uh, we're talking a little bit about uh, continued on in the idea of, uh, of uh, giving and uh, generosity, and we're kind of getting into a little bit of the subject of giving. And, uh, I don't have any props to hide behind uh, up here. But uh, anyway, um, I appreciated uh, Chris's uh, message last week, and this is kind of a continuation from chapter 8 into chapter 9. I'd like to read the start with the first few verses of chapter 9 in 2 Corinthians. And once again, uh, Paul is. Uh, preparing to uh, uh, the people in Jerusalem were struggling at this time. They were, they were going through a famine. There were a lot of hurting people. They were in heavy financial need. And Paul is trying to, and Paul got this message out back in, in the Acts and where the people of uh, the Corinthians and Achaia, which is kind of the area of modern Greece, um, have been saving up for a year to send a special offering to the people of uh, Jerusalem or the church in Jerusalem going on at that time. But so starting in chapter 9, it says, There is no need for me to write to you about this service to the saints, for I know your eagerness to help. And I have been boasting about you in Macedonia, telling them that since last year, you and Achaia were ready to give, and your enthusiasm has stirred most of them to action. But I'm sending the brothers in order that our boasting about you in this matter should not prove hollow, but that you may be ready as I said you would be. For if any Macedonians come with me to uh, find you unprepared, we, not to say anything about you, would be ashamed of having, of having been so confident. So I thought it necessary to urge the brothers to visit you in advance and finish the arrangements for the generous gift you have promised. Then it will be ready as a generous gift and not as one grudgingly giving. Um, when I first read this, um, and I was uh, looking at some of my study guides and stuff to help me kind of go through this. And it was amazing how many of the study guides skipped chapter 9 of Corinthians. Uh, it was something that they didn't want to touch um, for some, but I was able to find some notes. But when I first read this, and just kind of, you know, if a reader was here and just kind of reading it, uh, you're, you're, I'm looking at this and I have to be honest with you, this may not sound the most spiritual, but this is almost something that could come out of the Godfather. Um, uh, uh, look at boys, uh, I'm writing to you, uh, I know that this great gift that you have, but I want you to make sure this is for the family. Now, now I'm sending Titus and some of my boys down to make sure that this is going to go through. You know, we have ways of convincing you to do the right thing. Thank you, Saul. Uh, a little bit of the, uh, the, the thing here when you, when you look at it, and uh, you know, fortunately, nobody will find a dead horse in their head or anything like that. But um, the, essentially, when you look at it just from its basis, that's almost sounding like. But let me assure you, uh, this is not what Paul was trying to emphasize. Um, but, but Paul is um, you just, you know, really, uh, he's talking about he is overjoyous that these people from Acadia and Corinthians are. Are, are giving such a tremendous gift to the people in Jerusalem. And if you look back in the, like the 18th chapter of, of Acts, Paul was in Achaia for his second missionary uh, journey. And as a matter of fact, let me just show you something here. Um, oops, sorry. Okay. 
in, in Acts, uh, the 18th chapter, uh, Paul is, is there and he gets a vision uh, from the Lord and, it's, and, uh, and he's there and uh, there's a vision from the Lord and it says, Do not be afraid, keep on speaking, do not be silent, for I am with you and no one is going to attack or harm you because I have many people in the city. So, so Paul stayed for a year and a half teaching them the word of the word of God, God. And then it says, while uh, Galileo was the proconsul of Achaia, there was a group of Jews that that uh, it's and here it's kind of funny. It says uh, uh, proconsul in Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul just after the Lord said, nobody's going to attack you. But, um, but, but uh, they did not harm him and through the thing. So anyway, uh, and it goes that uh, uh, the, the, uh, to, the, to the leader and stuff, they, they brought, uh, the, the Jews brought Paul to uh, uh, Galileo and, uh, and was accusing him of, of, the, of the, these different crimes, but he had no, uh, the, the judge there had, had no, uh, no reason to put him on trial and everything, and so he, if the Jews were so mad at that time, they they started beating up their own prosecutor, the one that was actually making the accusations, and which some believe that after that time, so uh, uh actually was converted in the first part of Corinthians, and he was the one that was being beat up. But anyway, getting back to the thing was Paul is once again is is, is trying to uh, uh, send send this letter, and you got to think about the whole all the situations that the Corinthians had been through from the point of the letters of First Corinthians and Second Corinthians, getting them straightened out on dot on on doctrine, who the real leader. Uh, was uh, not Apollos, not Paul, not other some, some, but it was the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That was who they're supposed to be following. He had to straighten them out on on the Lord's Supper, uh, um, on baptisms, uh, many, many different things. But yet, uh, the Lord says, "I have a great many people in the city here, and through all the problems and some of the distress." There was a remnant of true Christian believers, not under false teachings or anything like this, who were eager and wanted to give what they could as, as they were led of the Lord. And so, uh, but Paul is saying, I'm writing about you, you are accountable. You're the ones that said, we want to give this gift to Jerusalem. We have been preparing it for a year. So Paul, rather than taking the chance of going down there and doing it and putting them under stress, is sending these people down ahead of time to help prepare to receive this great offering that they're doing at this time. Then in verse 6, it says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is, uh, is able to make all grace abound to you so that you, so that all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As is written, He has scattered abroad the gifts to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Ever. So here Paul is giving us a, a great illustration of, of and it's just, uh, it, it's, it's basically common sense. If you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. The, the people that were worked in agriculture knew this, and, and, and he's saying, but the whole point is we're talking about, in, we're in the aspect of giving. And, 
and here Paul is saying, each man decides in his heart. And that's the tremendous truth in giving. Uh, you know, some people, uh, you know, uh, you know, tie regular, regularly and everything, but what is in your heart? What is the Holy Spirit giving in your heart? And, and he said, because if, you, if you're doing, if you're giving, but you're doing it reluctantly, it's a wasted sacrifice. Or if it's under, well, under compulsion. Uh, God, if, what Paul is saying, he says, I want you to be able to give generously. But, uh, and, 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 you know, we have, uh, as we've been talking about, we have different events, we have different things going on in the church here. And not only that, I'm talking about the, the church in, in general. Um, I've uh, been with the Hard Hat Ministry. I had to go out and deputate, deputate for my support and stuff. And I was, uh, as some of you know, I was kind of the, one of the first missionaries Hard Hat had that was uh, the missionary with the one-way ticket. Um, I would have enough money to get to a place, but not enough to get back. And they say, well, we'll get you there, we'll worry about getting you back later. You know, no, no problem, no, no pressure. But, but, uh, but, that's just, but, but the thing is, was the willingness to be able to do it and being able to give generously uh, to, to the work uh, that, I, that, that I do. But um, when, when we talk about... Uh, us as, a, as Christians, as a united people, if uh, God wants us to follow our hearts. We, we, we talk about the, the, necess necess the necessity of tithing proper and stuff. Paul is taking it a step further. Remember, tithing, if for the most part, was done in Old Testament times. It was in the law. And sometimes when we give, we feel like we're giving within the law. How many of you like, you know, we all have to pay taxes, right? So how many of us enjoy paying taxes? How many of us do, do, do it? Uh, you know, sometimes we get stuff back, but for the most part, and, and taxes are, are needed, but, but we do it under the law, not under the... The term of grace, and Paul is talking about being able to give as as each man for what he has decided in his heart. So, if a person you know feels that uh, he, he he may hesitate to give generously and to worry about having enough money to meet their own needs, but Paul is assuring that God, in His own way, in His own doing, will still meet our needs. Uh, to be able to give, and then, and then uh, there's two words here. He uses re uh, uh, not reluctantly or under compulsion, and uh, this is a point that hits two areas. Not only the the people that are doing the give, uh, giving, because there are many, many different uh, there are the valid ministries, and then there are some other ministries that. Uh, and I, I'm not going to uh, uh, make any accusation against any one particular ministry or anything like this. It's for you guys to, to do. But there are ministries out there that uh, their whole idea is to give offerings under the compulsion of our heads, not our hearts. That's what advertising is basically about. They do if somebody has a product and they'll do everything that they can to sell it to you whether you need it or not. It's, it's the idea that you need to have this whether you do or don't and things, of, and things of that nature. And so this message isn't uh, not only are also giving for a compulsion, but we as a church, and when I say the church, I'm not I'm talking about the basically the church in general, but however, if the money belt fits, um, it could be here as well too, but uh, that we have to have a discerning mind. Yes, we have needs. Yes, we need to make needs known and stuff, but whenever the needs of 
of whatever it is that we need for, start preeminating the, the doctrine of Jesus Christ and the doctrine of grace, which is to be taught in the church here, uh, then there are serious questions. Are we doing too, uh, too much to try to get these needs met? Are we asking too much for the people? And so like it says, it says, uh, uh, God loves a cheerful giver. And that's the whole point. Is that the Holy Spirit is working in your heart and He wants you to give. He wants you to do it 100% without reservation. He wants you to give it joyously. And actually the term uh, to give joyously is actually comes from uh, uh, the Greek, Greek word hilarious, which we get our term hilarious. So think about it. Are we giving hilariously to, uh, to, to the church? You know? and, the, and if you take that root word back even further, it actually means uh, from the, the actual Hebrew um, is is, is that of, of a, 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 a shining, uh, to, to be a shot, to have a shining part of you. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the word hilarious means uh, it's a readiness of mind, that joyous, uh, it's uh, joyous to do whatever it may be done. That is what actually the hilarious part is not just laughing and controllably or just acting funny, but it, it's, it's a set mind that we can be happy about it and that we're actually going to the point of, of, of actually uh, we're a shining example. In, in, the, in the Psalms it says the person is anointed with their face with oil so that it may shine. That's what God wants. He wants us to be a shining example that we can give um, uh, without reservation and we can do it uh, joyously. And then he goes on to say, now he who supplies the seed to the sower and the bread for food will also uh, supply and increase your store of seed and you will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion, through through us, your generosity will re result in thanksgiving to God. God is telling us that He's the one that will supply your needs and stuff, and He will do it. And if you take care of it and use what He has given you properly, He can cause it to increase. And when He causes it to increase, that way you can give. Um, more to the people that uh, uh, or services that are needing uh, uh, needing uh, this these uh, things for special help, and so uh, this is the whole thing that he wants us to understand and to be able to do. Uh, the service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of God's people, but it is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God, because of the evidence that accompanies your confession by the gospel of Christ and that your generosity is sharing with them and everyone else. And their prayers for you and the hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for His indescribable gift. As He, as he continues on telling us how God in his miraculous way, will supply your needs if you're willing and open with open hearts, willing to give what the Holy Spirit has challenged you. And when I say give, this is where we have to spend our time in prayer and, and alone with God and, and listen to God for what is God actually telling you that you may take or give or whatever. It is. It's, not, it's not a command per se, that you have to give so much for this, but God is using the freedom He is giving you through the grace of God that, that you can make that judgment to give or not to give. That's the whole point. But ultimately, 
what he's doing, and he's winding up this whole argument of, 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 uh, of giving. He brings it all the way back to God's grace. He says, in the prayers for you, the hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace as God, that God has given to you. And it goes all the way back that before we can give the proper way, we need to understand the right relationship to the grace of God and what He has done for us. And, and, it, it talk, and going back to the idea of, 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 um, of being a cheerful giver or a joyful giver in that, um, in um, uh, chapter 12 um, uh, of Hebrews, it says, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy has set before him endured the cross. So even in the sacrifice that Jesus did, it, he did it out of pure joy. And he wants us to understand that that joy is the same type of open heart um, and, and joyfulness to be a cheerful giver. Because uh, uh, that that was God's ultimate gift for us. It wasn't five percent. It wasn't ten percent. It wasn't fifty percent. It was well over a hundred percent that God, what God did for us. And as we look on that, we're challenged by by many, many different needs, uh, many, many different wants and stuff. And so not only do we keep our church going uh, sufficiently and as we go out as a community of believers to reach others for Jesus Christ, um, our, our missions, going to Mexico, Howard going down to Peru to see his dad, these are great and generous needs. And we need to have the open hearts, the open minds to listen to the Holy Spirit, listen to what the grace of God is about, remembering what Jesus Christ has truly done for us, that we may give in proper accord to how he would have us walk and to give, but with the promise also that when we give the way we need to give, God in his way and his time always repays it back and he sometimes and he'll multiply that blessing as well.